In today's video, I imitate Matt, transform horse, destroy two transport wagons, modify King Tiger chassis, and primarily, winter is coming. Hello fellow modelers, maybe you remember my recent models, crazy E75 walking tank and scratch built rail semaphore. If not, you can check it out, because in this video I'm going to use them and create quite complex diorama. I start with extruded polystyrene base. This material is good, because you can easily set the basic dimensions of the whole scene and model basic terrain shapes. I have only a basic idea about the whole diorama scale and position of the different objects at this moment. Therefore, I place models to different angles and then sketch the selected position. One of the most essential and basic rules of each diorama is anti-symmetry. Thus, the position of the rails is to angle due to the pad. I realized that the pace is too small. The E75 and wagons need more space than I expected. Therefore, I extended base by a few centimeters, so the final dimensions are 23 to 20 centimeters. The extruded polystyrene is a soft material, so you can create terrain shapes and make it merely less flat. I decided to make a tracks on the small rail embankment. Even so, I must remove a lot of material. Honestly, I make dioramas sporadic, so I have only basic tools. However, you can use resistant wire cutters or something like that. In my case, I use only a cheap blade and I unify cuts with lighter. The polystyrene base is only basic template for terrain shapes, because it is ugly and artificial. I use for terrain texture a mix of water, plaster, soft gravel and sawdust. You can probably use only a plaster or some acrylic party, but the sawdust will make the texture rougher and the whole layer lighter, softer and primarily the sawdust will prolong drying time. I have the sawdust from local woodworkers. It is waste for them, so you can get it for free, mostly. Now the surface is nicely uniform. Don't forget to clean the tools after work, when the mix is still fresh. I'm probably telling this to myself, because I destroyed a few paintbrushes this way. You can find a lot of useful materials for your diorama in the shop for railroad models, like this soft gravel. The whole box cost me one or two dollars. The final texture is very nice, so it only remains to fix stones with a diluted PVA glue. Don't worry if the white glue will vanish, and create this way a resident layer. I have some rails from Model Collect, which were included with a transport wagon kit, but as you can see they are very simplified. Therefore, I recommend new rail tracks made by T-Model. In the kit is a lot of separate rail sleepers, so perfect if you want to create some corners or destroyed rail also. The sleepers have fine wooden texture, and I'm making it more pronounced with a dark wash. Then I pay more shading with oil paints. It could be tricky to place the rail symmetrical, as you can see. Luckily, on the kit box is a scheme that helps you with the correct position. Now it is much better, and I am using for gluing PVA glue again. I recommend to spend some extra time and try to find for each diorama or model good documentation. Here I have a nice picture of a crater after an explosion. Primarily are interesting shapes of the rails, so I will make something similar. The plastic is relatively soft, so you can shape rails to different angles. I pure gravel in two layers, because I needed to modify shapes of the rails after the explosion. If you make some rail diorama simply with not damaged rails, then you can glue rail on the polystyrene and pure gravel on the top.
another good rule of making dioramas is placing some vertical elements. You can use some telegraph poles, trees or even buildings. In this case, I have this nice scratch built rail semaphore. So now let's make the crater. You can also use for inspiration photos from the Great War. The plastic rail sleepers are lovely, but it is difficult to do real damage. Therefore suitable for imitation wood is balsa wood. Now I'm making matte texture and I use again my favorite mix of sawdust, water and plaster. But this texture is very soft and uniform, so you can add some dry roots or rotten wood. And also you can add dry pigment if you don't want to paint terrain afterward. This consistency is again quite disgusting, but perfect for damaged ground. The drying time of this mix is something like 20 minutes. It depends on how much plaster you add it. And I forgot to mention that plaster works in this mix as a binder, so you don't need to fix the result with a glue like gravel before. This is only a small 72 scale diorama, so 20 minutes is quite a lot of time. However, if you will decide to do something larger, then I recommend working only on small areas at once. As you can see, the result looks realistic and the whole process was straightforward. It is important to add a lot of natural materials and also gravel into the mix or on the surface and make it inconsistent. But nice touch is also details like sleepers. I use for frame baza wood planks and fix position with a PVA glue and pins for wooden chip models. But you can also use thin hypodermic needles. The balsa wood is very soft, so it is not a problem to cut it according to terrain. Now I'm covering frame edges and gaps with my terrain mix. And when the ground is still fresh, I push in traces after crash terrain wheels. The drying time of PVA glue is more or less one day, so in free time I made and painted these wagons and King Tiger chassis. The walking tank is large and weighs more 40 tons, so it would probably leave some holes in the ground in real. I use for final ground layer this acrylic texture. You can use PVA glue instead and color it with a paint. Anyway, I use it because it nicely fixes the grass, sand or vegetation and primarily creates more resilient layer than plaster and sawdust. The grass changes the color feeling of other elements, like rails, thus I need to make them more pronounced. I am painting with dry pigments more significant rust shading. If you are making diorama, you also need to choose the season. In my case, it will be late autumn, respectively early winter. So I use only short yellow brown static grass and simply puree it on the surface without static grass applicator. After the first snow, the grass is usually lying on the ground, so no need for static grass applicator this time. And as usual, the grass is very uniform, so you can add more natural materials or products for real road models. And winter is coming, but not so fast, honestly they should have said in the first season of a Game of Thrones. I must come back to the beginning and show you how to make the German platform wagon. I have a kit from Model Collect and didn't notice the E75 in the background first, so it's probably a good combination. Again the kit is not super detailed, but in the kit are two models and price is favorable. So I think it is suitable for my humble diorama.
the parts have very pronounced mold lines and ejector pin marks, so you can fill them with a putty and remove them with a sandpaper. Also, the overall construction is a little bit simplified, so I modified the basic structure with a plastic profiles. As you can see, the second wagon stand out from diorama, so it needs a small cut. I use a razor saw for this purpose. In the kit is a lot of decals with labels, so the easy way is to moisten the whole sheet with the water and place them on the surface one after other. All decals are on the model so that I can soften them with the decals chemicals and correct position. The difference with the applied decals is so significant. I have a problem with the wooden floor on the model. The texture is too soft in comparison with a similar T model kit and primarily I need to make it damage, so the lie saver is again balsa wood. I am cutting a lot of lines that imitate planks, and then I paint it with a brown alcohol based mordant, and make it less uniform with ugly colors. You can simply paint each plank with different brown shades, because the wood has different tones also. You already know that balsa wood is very soft, so it is not a problem to do some minor damage or separate each plank. In the end, I am painting dirt, leaks, shading and accumulated rust with enamel paint. So the wagons are with the step finished, and I can glue them on the diorama. Maybe the good idea is to add some cargo. I wondered about some barrels or ammunition boxes, but then I realized that I have old two Dragon 72 scale kits in collection. I will never build them, so I can destroy them, respectively modify King Tiger chassis for my diorama. I highly recommend for modifications like this microelectric engraver, something like Dremel or Proxon, and handy are different milling cutter heads. The kit has holes exactly on the places which original tank didn't have, so you must drill out a new one and fill the epoxy party with wrong holes. So 
so that was easy. The rest of parts I must make from scratch. I use plastic boards and profiles of different sizes and diameters. I probably missed some details, but it is only chassis, so it doesn't matter too much. I unified the model with a primer and removed some imperfections. The surface is not rusty, but painted with a factory red-orange based color, but it looks like a rust. Now I am painting with acrylic paint modulation. It means that you can paint some highlights with a lighter orange shade or stains because the surface painted only with an airbrush looks artificial. I let everything dry properly and look at the model another day with a different mood and decided that the color is too dark, so I am spraying another layer of the highlights with an orange color. I modified the position of King Tiger chassis and glue it at the angle. As a result I must modify the orientation of the leaks. I have more abstract thinking, so I fill the whole diorama like a one object. Therefore I am usually frustrated when I start with a diorama and do not have any finished model or well through out each detail. If you feel it the same, I highly recommend separating each model and your thinking from diorama and just make each model like a unique project. It is just a basic rule of computer programming. Try to separate complex projects to more parts. However, if you do not have any artistic education, it is hard to set correct color and modulation on separate models. So sometimes you need to modify it when it's all together. Like here, I am making the wood lighter because it doesn't work with a red brown chassis. Ok, now I can finally finish the diorama and apply snow. You probably know how to make a snow texture from baking soda, but there is one issue, it turns yellow after some time. In my opinion, the best and the most realistic snow is whipped acrylic party. You can buy it in almost any house supply store, and it designed for fast repairing of wall cracks. You don't need to mix it with a glue, water or any binder. Simply open the box and use it. So it is literally snow in the box. As you can see, the application is straightforward. Just spread party with a brush and try to make it inconsistent. And you don't need to fix party with a glue because it nicely adheres to surface. I will probably make some other diorama with a heavy snow layer, but the tracks and grass ground are nice, so I'm applying only a soft layer this time. Now when I apply the snow layer, 
The crater looks very dry and no dry is taking this season. Thus I'm mixing Vallejo still water and brown acrylic paint and puree it into the crater. The drying time of a white acrylic party is something like between 3 or 5 hours and when it's still fresh it is possible to dilute it with water or make it dirty with acrylic paint. The partisan attack and explosion were hypothetically a few weeks ago, so I am applying accumulated snow around wheels because under wagons is shadow, so the snow possible didn't melt so quickly. I expected that the result would be much worse, but I'm quite pleased with it so far. However, there is still a lot of work. If you look at the diorama at this angle, what do you think about dull red brown chassis? Boring, isn't it? That is again same as with the water in the crater. The snow changes the filling of colors and objects. I need to make it less uniform with the more snow. However, there is a problem. I need a snow dust and for this is not suitable the acrylic party which I used before. And another problem is scale. I need very smooth dust. I have this eye sparkles, but it is good probably for 45 scale models. Therefore, I recommend snow micro balloons from AK. It is basically glass powder. So, if you have some local glass workers, you can ask them if they have some residual dust. The application is stay forward, but you need to spray PVA glue on the model surface first, then pure powder on the model. I know, I know, it looks like a sugar. But this stuff you cannot dissolve with the water so that it will nicely stay soft and primarily white even on the fat PVA glue layer. You can make the surface more interesting with the water leaks from melting snow. I simply use clear varnish, which creates a nice shiny contrast on the matte surface. I applied fresh snow on the tank and wagon models, so I must logically apply it also on the rest of the diorama. Now it's time for more vegetation. Around roads and rails are also in the winter some bushes and grass teams. So you can use again different products from railroad models and are lovely. But I also like this dry grass, which I found in local forests and fields. So you can use a lot of natural materials which are realistic, looks good and primarily are for free. I try to eliminate green colors as much as possible. So for the whole diorama I use only shades like brown and yellow. I am separating fine steams from dry grass and gluing them on the terrain. 
it's a quite time consuming because I need to glue more than 100 details and try to use different types of grasses and flowers. It will make the surface more inconsistent. It's quite hard to see difference from the top view, but it's quite cool from the side view. Now I'm applying the resin water. You can prevent leaks with a masking tape, but do not use paper one. It usually soaks up resin and then doesn't hold on the surface. So better is elastic or electrical tape. You can make the puddle the other with a light brown acrylic paint. It nicely spills to all directions. The resin created on the edge protrusions, which I am cutting out with a sharp blade and unifying with a clear varnish. You can use, of course, different colors for diorama frame, but the black is best. So with this step is diorama finished. But what about some soldiers miniatures? The diorama is pure fiction, so I think I can do something funny with it. I have from Forge World this nice resin death corpse of Krieg horse with a gas mask. So it inspired me to make something similar and modify my 72 scale horse from CMK. I use for sculpting ordinary epoxy party from Alteco. The drying time is 2 hours and the final result is robust, so you can make some fine details. I also modified two soldiers that were inside King Tiger kit, which I modified earlier. For painting small miniatures are necessary good paint brushes. I tested different types and at this moment I like Da Vinci Harbin. It has natural smooth hairs, so perfect for small details. Also this paintbrush is quite expensive, so for cleaning I use only water and soap. Honestly, I never painted a horse before, so I was curious what I can do with it. I use for shading oil paints, because you can nicely blend color and make smooth shading. You can also do the same with acrylic paints, but it seems to be quite tricky, at least for me. It took me almost two days to sculpt new details and paint these miniatures, so I'm not sure if it's worth it. But in the end, it is another nice detail and make the diorama more lively. I spent a few months with this diorama, so two days more or less are negligible. It is one of my largest and probably the most complex diorama which I made to this date. It is fun if you compare it with my first diorama which I made one or two years ago. However, if you want to start with something similar, it is not what I recommend. Important is to start modestly and with something easier, one model and small terrain. 
Anyway, I hope you like the result just a little bit and learn something new again. Next time probably some battleship, modern jet fighter or racing car. You can write me a comment about what you like to see. That is all. Thank you for watching and stay creative. Here is the finished model.